Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. It is a brand new year, so I decided to celebrate by showing you how to use Adobe After Effects to create some fireworks. Now, this is going to be an intermediate tutorial, so I will assume that you are quite familiar with Adobe After Effects. If you're just starting out, do check out some of my beginner tutorials instead, but without further ado, let's jump right into Adobe After Effects. For this tutorial, we will be using a great third-party plugin that I highly recommend you get, and that is Trapcode Particular. Trapcode Particular is a particle system that offers much more advanced controls than the inbuilt CC particle world effect. I have put a link to the plugin's product page in the description of the video, so go check that out if you're interested. Let's look at a few simple examples of fireworks created with Trapcode Particular. Here's a basic red glitter firework. A blue one with some secondary spark particles being spawned off. And something completely different, a green spinning firework that dissolves into a gold mist. For this tutorial, we will be creating the second one, the blue fireworks with the silver sparks. As I mentioned, this will be an intermediate tutorial, so if you find this going too fast for you, hop over to my channel page and work your way through the beginner tutorials first. This year, I will be picking up the pace a little bit to get to some of the more advanced visual effects. Create a new solid for the particles. I will call mine Particle Explosion and ensure it matches your comp size, which for me is 1920 by 1080. Then search for and apply the Trapcode Particular plugin to this layer. You will end up with a simple particle effect that continuously spawns boring white particles from the middle of your layer. Now fireworks usually explode into a large cluster of glowing fragments, so let's animate the particle emission to do just that. Set your timeline indicator to where you want the fireworks to appear. For me, that will be around the one second mark. Now go to the particular effect and open up the emitter settings. Enable keyframes on the particles per second parameter and set it to a fairly high number like 6000. Move back one frame and set the value to zero. Then jump forward by two frames and again set the value to zero. This will cause particular to emit 6000 particles per second for a single frame only, which at 24 frames per second is 250 particles. Scrub through your footage and it should look a little bit more like a firework. However, it does not feel like an explosion as the particles move too slowly and way too consistently. Go back to the effect settings and jack the velocity up to something around 2000. Obviously, all the settings I'm using might have to be changed slightly depending on your shot and the effect you are trying to achieve. Bam! All the particles are now shot off violently from the emitter, but they fly way too far. For real firework, the glowing fragments are slowed down by friction as they fly through the air. Trapcode Particular can simulate this behavior. Expand the Physics tab and, within that, open up the Air properties. Air Resistance specifies how much your particles are slowed down by the air. Set this to somewhere around 5 so that all of your particles remain fairly clustered together and they're all visible on the screen. Let's play this back. That's much better. It actually starts to look like fireworks. I find the final distribution of the particles a little bit too random and this is caused by them having a bit of variance in regards to their velocity. We can fix this up simply by lowering the velocity random property to something below 10. You don't want them all to be perfectly in sync, but the particles should be laid out fairly evenly around the center of the explosion. I also usually like to set the velocity from motion property to zero. This actually only matters when you animate the emitter position, but I always like to turn it off unless I explicitly need it. Whenever you deal with explosive movement, here with our particles, remember to enable motion blur both on the layer and on the composition. If I zoom in, you can clearly see the effect the motion blur has on the particles in the initial few frames where they move really fast before they're slowed down by the air resistance. This will simply add a little bit more force to your firework explosion and make it look a little bit more realistic. Let's add some gravity to the particles. In the physics section of the Trapco particular effect, increase the gravity to something like 400. This will make your firework particles sink down as they would in real life. Actually, I think that's a bit too much gravity. The particles falling a little bit too quickly. Let's tone it back to maybe around 300. That looks better. Now it's time to concentrate on the look of the actual particles. In the particular effect settings, open up the particle tab. The first thing we want to do is set the particle type to glow sphere. This will add a nice glow around each individual particle. 
Since we want our particles to shrink as they fall and burn out, open up the size over life property. On the right side, you will find a number of boxes with presets defined. Click on the declining slope icon and your particle size will now continuously decrease over their lifespan. Do exactly the same for the opacity over life property, causing the particles to fade away slowly. Let's have a look at what we got. It looks pretty cool already, but all particles fade away at the same time, which looks a little bit unnatural. In the particle tab of the effect, increase the live random property to maybe around 30 to add a little bit of variance to the lifespan of the individual particles. That looks a lot more natural. Time to give the particles some color. Trapcode Particular offers a number of options of how to calculate the particle color. For fireworks, change the set color property to over live. This will enable the color over life property of the effect. Expand this property and you can see the various colors that each particle will pass through throughout their lifetime. If we scrub through our footage, we will get a very colorful firework explosion going from red to yellow to green and then to blue. That looks very, very funky, but it's not actually what we want. Go back to the color over life property and using the presets on the right, set it to a simple gradient. I will actually leave the start color as white since I want the particles to be very bright at the moment of explosion. I will insert a second color by clicking to the right of the first color tag. You can double click this color tag to bring up the color picker. Change this color to a bright blue or anything else you like. This is really up to you. Looking at the effect now, we can see the particles are spawned solid white and then transition into a nice blue glow. Go back and insert any other color transitions you want your particles to have. I like to add a few very quick color changes towards the end of the particle's life, ending with black. This will cause the particle to flicker just as it's about to die. Hmm, the flicker is a little bit hard to see as our particles both fade out and get smaller. Now, since their final color will be solid black anyways, let's set the opacity to remain constant. Not sure you can see this unless you expand the video to full 1080p, but the particles now glitter nicely just as they're about to vanish. Let's add some more detail to this firework and have the main particles emit little sparks as they are falling down. For this, you can use the auxiliary system in Trapcode Particular. This system allows your particles to spawn other particles. Go over to the effect settings and scroll down to reveal the AUX system tab. Expand this tab and set the emit property from off to continuously. If you scrub through your clip now, the blue particles are continuously emitting new rainbow colored particles. I know this is a little bit trippy, but we'll worry about that in a second. Let's first configure the auxiliary system so that these particles are only emitted towards the end of the fireworks explosion. Go back to the effect settings and expand the control from main particles tab. In here you will find a start emit and stop emit property. These properties define when your main particles will spawn child particles relative to their own lifespan. Let's set them to start around 30%. I will set the end time to around 70% and see how it looks. Not too bad, but I think the particles get spawned a bit too early. Scroll to the exact position where you want your main particles to start spawning sparks and then adjust the start emit value to match. For me, that is around 65%. If we scrub through the clip now, the auxiliary particles are only spawned towards the very end of the effect, just what we want. Time to fix up how these sparks actually look and behave. First, we want these sparks to be emitted quite forcefully, so in the AUX system tab for the particular effect, jack up the velocity. I'm going to push this all the way up to the maximum, which is a thousand. Now, of course, this is much too fast, and if you preview this, you will notice that your particles end up flying all over the place, but just like with the main particles, you can use air resistance to keep them in check. Open up the physics tab for the AUX system and increase the air resistance to maybe around 40 to keep all of the particles close to where they're being spawned. That looks much better. Lower the particle size to two, so they really only add a little bit of glitter to your fireworks explosion effect. Just like with the main particles, go over to the size over life property and set it to decline continuously. Then open up the color over life property and set it to a simple gradient. For my spark particles, I will choose a bright golden yellow. Actually, I think I will delete the end tag of the gradient by dragging it downwards off the color selector, so I end up with a simple solid color. The shrinking size will make the sparks vanish naturally anyways. Let's play this back and see what we got. 
Again, if you can't see what's going on, try increasing your video player or jacking up the video quality. The sparks are pretty small, but they look good to me. I will, however, brighten up the color just a little bit more. That's nice, I like that. Let's play back the final fireworks effect. Cool, looks pretty realistic, but I feel I do want my particles to flicker a little bit stronger towards the end. For this, go back to the settings for the main particles. I will actually set the opacity over life to decrease, but instead keep the size constant so the flickering becomes a little bit more obvious. Ah, much better. I'd say we're done with the main explosion. Let's quickly create a simple trail of sparks shooting upwards before the big explosion. For this, create another solid to hold your particles. I will call this one Fireworks Trail. Again, apply the Trap Code Particular plugin to the layer. I will disable the particle explosion for now. Go to the beginning of your composition and open up the emitter settings. Enable keyframes for the position XY property and push the emitter position down, just off the screen. Then move forward to where your firework explosion kicks in, for me that is one second, and move the emitter to the exact location of the explosion. You should now have a trail of particles moving upwards to meet the explosion just in time. Of course, we want the trail to stop emitting particles once the main firework goes off, so keyframe the particles per second property. Animate the property to drop down to zero just after the explosion strikes, so the trail stops emitting new particles. Better, but the particles still don't behave like sparks. Go to the effect settings for the fireworks trail and set the velocity from motion to zero. This will prevent the particles from moving in the direction of the emitter. Let's style the particles, so open up the particle tab. As before, set the particle type to glow sphere. Reduce its life to around two and set the size to one. I will also increase the live random property a little bit just so the sparks don't all look uniform. Now open up the opacity over life property and set it to continuously decrease. I will also do the same for the size over life property. Let's scrub through our composition and see what we got. Not bad, but still requires a bit of tweaking. For one, I will reduce the life property a little bit to maybe 1.2 and I will also decrease the velocity of the particles to 50 so they stream off the emitter a little bit more smoothly. Let me zoom in a little bit just so you can see the effect a bit clearer. Finally, go back to the particle settings and change the set color option to over live. Then change the color to go from yellow to a dark red like a fading spark. I would say that should do for the particle trail. Re-enable the main fireworks particle explosion and let's have a look at what we ended up with. A pretty cool fireworks effect. Now I will create a detailed second part to this tutorial to show you how I composited the fireworks into the intro shot for this video. But for those of you who don't want to wait, I will quickly give you a little crash course so you can start putting something nice together right now. First, pre-compose all your particle layers. I will call my new comp Fireworks Comp. You will end up with a single layer that contains your spark trail and the fireworks explosion. In my composition I actually had another layer hidden that contains some cloud stock footage. This stock footage comes from Video Copilot's free stock footage pack and you can find a link in the description of this video. It is a simple clip of some dramatic clouds moving. I have slowed this down by a lot and so it looks a little bit choppy. You can fix this up by enabling the frame blending option on the layer and on the composition. That looks much smoother. Place your fireworks layer on top of the clouds. Wow, that's hardly visible. So let's change the blend mode of the fireworks comp layer to additive. This will separate the fireworks a little bit clearer from the cloud background. While that is a little bit better, the clouds are still way too bright in my opinion. We can fix that up with a simple hue and saturation effect. Apply a hue and saturation effect to the clouds layer and bring down the master saturation and the master lightness by a lot to make it look like it's a dark night sky. Immediately, you can see the fireworks much more clearly. I'll just tweak the hue and saturation effect a little bit more, just cause I'm picky. Nice. Finally, we want the fireworks to cast a nice glow onto the clouds. For this, duplicate the fireworks comp layer. I will rename this copy to fireworks glow. Place it just above the clouds layer and then go and search for the glow effect. Apply the glow effect to the layer and then jack up the glow radius and the glow intensity quite drastically to create a big intense glow. As I mentioned in my separate glow tutorial, 
Remember to set your project to use 32 bits per channel so that the large scale glow becomes nice and visible. Tweak the glow as required to make your fireworks stand out clearly against the clouds. Let's play the effect back. It's not bad, but the fireworks stop glowing towards the end of the effect. I will fix this by lowering the glow threshold a little bit more. I want my fireworks to cast glow onto the clouds until the very end. That looks better, but the biggest problem is that the glow is boring and flat. Let's use track mats to integrate it much better with the clouds. For this, duplicate the clouds layer. Place this copy directly above the fireworks glow. We will use this layer as a luma mat onto the glow, so we want this layer to be nice and contrasty. Search for the brightness and contrast effect and apply it to the layer. Bring up the brightness and the contrast until you get a nice dramatic image of clouds. The bright parts of this layer will define where the glow for the fireworks will strike the clouds. To avoid this being too harsh, apply a simple fast blur effect to the layer as well. I will set the blurriness to around 5 to soften the matte just a little bit. Finally, go over to the fireworks glow layer and set the track matte to luma matte. Voila! The glow of your fireworks will now look like it's being cast onto the structure of the clouds rather than just sit flat on top of it. Actually, I think I will make this look a little bit more dramatic and increase the glow by lowering the glow threshold even more. I will also further jack up the intensity and lower the glow radius a little bit just to concentrate the glow. Again, remember to tweak this to your liking. Don't think that what I'm doing here is hard and fast rules in any way. And there you have it. A great looking fireworks effect created in Adobe After Effects with the Trapcode Particular plugin. And don't worry, I will release a second part where I will show you in detail how to composite your fireworks realistically into a moving shot like I did with the intro to this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this After Effects tutorial. As always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them in the section below. If you would like to show some support, please subscribe, hit that like button, share the video around. It really helps out a lot with the channel. And as always, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later and I wish you a very happy new year.